Uh, no clapping. Uh, we try to be quiet around here. Uh, we're going to take a little detour from Dog of the Week regular segment this time. Uh, we have some exquisite exotic animals to show you. Um, some people thought that these animals would be great house pets, but uh, brothers and sisters, they are very, very wrong indeed. You must never do this. This is uh, Rona Suzuki. She's the education director for the Greater Vancouver Zoo. Now a home for many uh, discarded is, is uh, too kind a of word for many wild animals. This, of course, is a cheetah uh, in the company of uh, Richard Dean Anderson, who, who uh, is the guy that wouldn't leave. So uh, <laughs> why was, uh, how old was he when he was a pet? Uh, if he's 10 now. I believe he was adopted by his previous owner um, probably about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Three years ago. And he actually lived in a guild farm. He, he was hand-raised, always being accustomed to people. And unfortunately, that place closed down and the owner was desperately trying to find a home for him. And so desperate, in fact, that he even tried to give away the, the healthy, fully sighted female um, as a team because you know, he just didn't want this animal destroyed. And, right, uh, and a, a blind cheetah is not, uh, it's its even more trouble than a sighted cheetah. Well, maybe yeah. not. You know, it's not that the trouble, it's just that they need a lot of work, yes. a lot of handling, and a lot of zoos just can't, don't have that manpower to do that. Right, uh, or, or maybe even the ability to deal with this particular kind mm -hmm. of cat. Um, this animal has been blind since birth? Actually, he lost his sight. His sight began to deteriorate probably about five years ago, and now he's completely blind. He doesn't even see shadows. No light, no dark. No. And uh, is this um, make him um, more difficult to deal with? Is he afraid, or frightened by things differently than he would be if he could see? That's actually an interesting question because we have a female um, cheetah as well, and Sultana is fully sighted, and she's just as tame as Valiant, but she's a little bit more frightened because she's more aware. Valiant, on the other hand, because he's very dependent on people, he trusts people. Um, you know, as you can see, Allison is um, his seeing eye person. Yes, and I also he never leaves home without. Um, you know, sound to guide him along. So he's become very trusting and very dependent on people. He what about those running? I mean, this is a creature that goes like a bullet. In, in nature, yeah, they would. But in his case, because he has to watch where he's going, he relies on someone um, who can run as fast as he can to keep up with them. Uh, but he does go for his regular exercise every day. You take him out, he get, gets out for his morning exercise. And we have to do it in the morning before we open because he's quite well known in the area that people will mob him. <laughs> right. So we have to do it from, you know, before our gates open. Where would you get a cheetah? I mean, in this case, this was a game farm animal, but people, I know somebody that had an ocelot once. And, I mean, it's the same sort of thing. You, you can't have these exotic animals. You can have a kitten. You can have a doggy. Yes, that's You right. can't have a cheetah. Well, the unfortunate thing is the... If you apply for permits for exotic animals, you can get a tiger. Um, a tiger? Yes, yes. And unfortunately, yes, they're very cute when they're small. But if you thought your house cat can do a number on your furniture, wait till you see what a tiger can do. Yeah, but apart from that, I don't, you know, anyone who buys a tiger and puts it in his house uh, deserves to have it demolished. I mean, the, 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 the cat doesn't know. They should they're never be allowed in the country. That's right. Well, they're just doing what, um, you know, they're meant to do. That's right. You know, and they will mark things, they will scent mark things, they will carve things up. That's just what the nature of the beast. He has not done any of this. No. Uh, well, that's interesting about the cheetah because they have non-retractile claws. In other words, their claws are similar to a dog's. They're out all the time, you mean? They're out all the time, and that allows them better traction when they are running. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's unusual for a cat. They're one of the few species of cat that have that non-retractile claws. What's the difference between your zoo, it's a privately funded zoo, so that's the difference, I guess, uh, than uh, you know, a public zoo, a normal public zoo? Well, I, I'd say our biggest difference, or one of our biggest challenges is actually um, making sure that we can stay open and make improvements because we run totally on gate revenue. We get no subsidies from the government. We have no grants. Um, it's basically all public support. Right. Um, that's one of the biggest difference. He's mad for you. <laughs> well, I, think, yeah. I think he's in love. <laughs> he's in love with you. You cannot take him home. Your daughter would be thrilled, eh? Isn't he exquisite to see something up this close? You can come to your place and... Oh, watch, watch. And see this animal. Yeah. 
In fact, um, we received funding from the Cheetah Conservation Fund uh, to build a new cheetah conservation habitat. And in the very near future, we hope to start breeding these animals. There's only about 12,000 left in the wild. Really? Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll take a break and we'll, uh, we'll retire our cheetah and we'll bring out uh, a lynx, an infant lynx, and a uh, macaw, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Sorry, but macaw. we would have had a monkey except she's pregnant. <laughs> Should have been watching out for that. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in a minute. <laughs>